Welcome to O'Hero's educational series on fishing. Today, we're going to talk about cobia fishing. But first, before we do that, I want to tell everybody, in fishing, in general, there are no rules. And that's very important, because something that works today might not necessarily work tomorrow. But there's some things that can help and increase your fishing and make it much, much better. And hopefully, through this educational series, you will learn something that you didn't know before or something that will give you an extra edge the next time you're out there to catch a few extra fish or maybe a fish you have never caught. So what I want to do first is I compiled a bunch of facts about cobia just to talk about the fish because one of the most important things as an angler anywhere is to know the species that you're targeting their habits, their patterns, what they eat, their temperatures, and how they act on the tide conditions. So what we'll do first is we'll go over a few facts that I piled up. Another thing that I'd like to tell everybody is that when you look up or you read about a fish or a species or maybe anything in the angling world of fishing, you'll find out that some things are different. You'll hear or read about cobia spawning in the middle of the summer. Yes, they do, but that's up like on the Atlantic side of the ocean, up in Maryland. So here in the Gulf of Mexico, they would spawn at a different time. So you have to really read these articles closely sometimes because you'll hear something and say, no, I heard they spawn in the summer. And that's because you're reading something that was written about them up in Maryland or maybe on the Atlantic Ocean side. The first thing is you're going to, the, the cobia is a uh, pelagic, as I would say, but the way they really pronounce it is pelagic fish, which means they roam the open ocean, they live and grow and eat and feed near the surface. So you'll find them inshore, but you'll find them around structure and things. Cobia will migrate north in the spring and south in the fall. And that's all based on water temperature, just like the other pelagic species, like kingfish and mackerel. During the migration, and now this is very important, you'll find them running along the beaches even with no structure. One of the things that Kobe are famous for is hanging around channel markers and buoys but they also roam the beaches. At this time of the year, right now here, May, on the Gulf Coast of Florida, you can find many big cobia in single pairs and doubles just roaming up and down the beaches not far from where you would do your normal snook fishing in the swash channel. They'll be right there. And what you can do is run, your, run the beach with your boat, or if you're walking, just walk the beach, and you're going to look out for a large brown object, almost like a shark. And most likely that's going to be your cobia. Cobia are batch spawners. They spawn more than once during the season. And they can have thousands of uh, offspring when they spawn. They spawn in the bays in late summer to early fall in the Gulf of Mexico. So that's the Gulf of Mexico where they'll spawn. Late summer to early fall is when they big sp their big spawning uh, season is for cobia in the Gulf of Mexico. Something about cobia is that they like high salinity water. So the saltier the water is, the better they like it. And if you know, you'll hear people catching cobia out in the Gulf of Mexico up in bays. But how many times do you hear that somebody will catch a cobia in a river? I have ever, I've never heard of anybody catching a cobia in a river, but it's very rare if they did. And if they did, it's probably because there hadn't been a lot of rain for a while, and we've had a and there were many strong tidal flows to bring the salinity up all the way back in the river where, you, where, where it was caught. Something about cobia is that they're very attracted to debris. That could be seaweed rips, channel markers, buoys, offshore platforms. Sea turtles, even sea turtles. If you see a sea turtle uh, in the spring or fall migration, you can look really closely. There might be a cobia behind it. Now, most people talk about big rays. That's in the shallow flats, they'll follow these big rays. Sometimes they'll actually sit underneath the ray so you don't actually see the cobia. So it's always worth a shot at throwing a bait towards the big ray because as it falls down in the water column underneath the ray, if a cobia sees it, there's a good chance he'll grab it. So a big ray is another thing, and that's most of those you'll see on the flats. Manatees are another thing you'll see a lot, and cobia also will be either underneath them or they'll be behind. They like any objects. A piece of plywood 
even a bucket at times that was drifting along out in the tidal current will also be a place that you would look for cobia. Seventy percent of the cobia's diet is crabs. The nickname for the cobia, or one of the nicknames, is the crab eater. They love blue crabs. Yet here in Tampa Bay and out in the Gulf of Mexico, you hear most people throwing eels and pinfish at them. But they love crabs. Crabs, like I said, is 70% of their diet. So if you have a blue crab, you should keep it. If you ever catch a blue crab in the spring or fall or do a, during a run of cobia, keep the crab. Keep it in the live well. Just make sure you break the claws off on the crab so when you do hook the crab on your line that the pitchers don't grab the leader and tangle up your line because that will make for a tough hook set with the, with the fish. But they also enjoy fish. Um, you can throw a scale sardine, a thread fin, a pinfish. Copia really aren't too picky. They'll eat any fin fish, and they also eat eels. They eat many, many eels. Other nicknames that you'll hear cobia at times is lemon fish, ling, and black kingfish. Those are other names that you'll hear people call the cobia. And sometimes it gets confusing because you'll read an article or you'll look at an article title at something and it'll say. Um, ling or lemonfish or kingfish and you'll go right over it when you're looking for something for cobia but those are the names that they would call a cobia. Um, most people look for cobia, they sight fish them on channel markers and buoys. They're known to feed on the surface at many of the mentioned structures that I said, whether it be buoys, platforms. But they also feed very heavily on the bottom and you never want to disregard that. Um, I've caught more cobia on the bottom than I've ever caught on the top. and. They're very curious fish. Um, sometimes they'll show no fear of the boat or any noise around it. Last year, I practically ran a couple of cobia, just cruising by channel markers, not looking for cobia. I ran my boat by the channel marker, and there were three cobia on it. And they just moved away from the channel marker, but within a minute, they came right back to the channel marker. It did not even scare them. Um, so. Sometimes, just because you spooked them off doesn't mean they're not going to come back. So, if you see them and you did scare them, whether they sounded down deep or they took off, I would go back to that area and I would sit there. I'd even just turn the boat around and go anchor there because there's a good chance that they're going to come back. When anglers sight fish on the surface, um, I always tell them that after you fish the surface because you saw them, you should always have a bait down around deep in the water column for them because that's where they might be sitting because you just scared them down and they're sitting there and it doesn't mean they're not going to eat. Uh, when catching a cobia at a structure above the surface like a channel marker, remember that location. It's likely you will always find cobia there in the seasons to come or at a future date. So if we went out and we were at channel marker 12 and we caught a big cobia there, I would make sure that I check that marker frequently and just because I go out there in a future date and I don't see a cobia, that doesn't mean there aren't any on the bottom. So I would continually fish it, especially if I'm targeting cobia. I think that will increase your cobia catch a lot. I know a lot of guys i have been on boats where they'll cruise markers for an hour and a half and if they don't see a cobia, they're done cobia fishing. Well. Then I'll ask them a question, if you, did you ever catch a cobia at one of these markers? Yeah, marker 12, I caught a cobia at it. I said, well, why don't we go fish that on the bottom? And I said, well, I didn't see any cobia there. Well, that doesn't mean they're not there. Because they love wrecks and reefs, and they do feed heavily on the bottom. So that's really important to remember. Um, like again, in the future, if you check that channel marker structure at the surface and you don't see any cobia lurking around it, it doesn't mean that there aren't any cobia. Um, there's a lot of times they're unseen and they're sitting on the bottom and they're eating. And why they're at the bottom? Because there are a lot of crabs on the bottom of the structure and they will eat there. Um, here's another thing. Cobia will also roam the flats. In the winter time, they're notorious of going around the flats within a quarter mile to a half mile outside a power plant because of the warm water. They are a subtropical species even though they go all the way up to Maryland and the Atlantic coast and they've even been caught in Massachusetts at times. But they're more common here. Um, the capital of the world for cobia, I would have to say, is between here and Destin. Destin being the well-known place. And, I, and, and you'll find them in Destin. When we get spring, they start moving north because it's cooler water up there. And they'll land up in Destin at the late spring to summer and they'll stay the whole time. They use the tower boats to cruise. And in Destin, 
a lot of times they actually catch them, the big ones off the beaches besides the offshore platforms. <laughs>